Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today is video number 16 in our Beginning Gardener series, and we're going to talk about transplanting. Now, I'll link a video above where I planted all these plants. These are my coal crops. These are the ones for our cool spring crops. We've got some cabbage, kohlrabi, some chichimisai, some tatsoi, a bunch of different plants that we need to pot up to a larger size pot. Now let me show you the plants and show you how we know when we need to pot them up. So these are our little plants here. These were started two weeks ago tomorrow. Oh, actually two weeks ago today. Today is Saturday, isn't it? And if you look at these plants, these right here are my yellow cauliflower. They have several true leaves. Now when I say true leaves, I'm talking about these leaves right here. When you look down at the base, this is what is called a cotyledon. This is not a true leaf. This is the first leaf that appears to nourish the little baby plants. And then the true leaves appear after that. So when you start getting these true leaves, you know, one or two of these true leaves, and the, and the plant is starting to fill out the container, it's time to pot them up. Now, if I didn't have so many little seedlings in each container, I might leave them in a little bit longer but we need to divide these transplants up and we need to pot them up into bigger pots. So that's what we're going to do today. And let me show you how we're gonna do it. So the first thing I did was went and filled all my pots with potting soil. This is a homemade potting soil. I'll link another video up at the top to show you how I made this. But this potting soil consists of coconut core, compost that I sterilized. I poured boiling water in it and I used more boiling water than compost and then mixed that in with the coconut core to soak up the extra water. And then I added perlite, worm castings, and a little bit of fertilizer. So I will, like I said, I'll link the video up above that shows you exactly how I made this potting soil. Now this is a potting soil that has nutrients in it. Seed starting mix does not have nutrients in it. So that is another reason why we need to start potting these plants up so they can get a little bit of nutrients. Now this is a messy job. You're going to need to either do this outside or over a potting table that can get messy. I have this wonderful container that I got at Sun River Gardens in Orem that can help contain the mess, but it is quite a messy job. So we're gonna take my little tags and we're going to put them at the head of the row of the containers that I'm gonna put pot these plants up in. Now I'm going to have to be very brave today. I really, really hate to throw away plants and my tendency is just to pot up everything. But if I only pot up the amount of plants that I can actually fit in my garden right now, we're going to have 65 pots, which is three and a half trays of plants. And this half right here, this is the, well, obviously it's not half, but this is going to be shoved into other trays. So I'm gonna pot up three trays, plus shove these into the other areas that I have room for. So I really don't have room to keep all of my plants. And it's gonna be a painful process, so please send your thoughts and prayers while I kill some baby plants. It's a necessary thing, but sometimes, but it does have to happen. So what I'm going to be able to keep is all of my chijimisai. This is the chijimisai right here. Let me show you what it looks like. So we have two little plants that were in this cell in this potting container. And both of them have their own roots. So what we're going to do is we're going to very, very gently tease these apart. So we're gonna put our hand on both sides. You can feel it ripping a little bit. We're gonna continuously put our hand down over the roots and now we've got one plant right here that it has its own root source. Now, even though we tore a little bit of the roots out, it's going to be okay. It will grow beautifully. So now we're going to dig a hole in this potting container. Slip the little seedling down inside of it. You can kind of see where it is there. And hopefully you can see this. We're going to very gently take the seedling up, pour it, put in the potting soil that we took out. And there we have, and there we have one seedling potted up. Let's do the other one. So here's the other one. I don't know if you can see it's connected all through here. There's little roots coming out everywhere. We're gonna pull some soil out of this pot Throw the little seedling down in there. 
and pot it up. And there, and there it is. Now, one thing that you may notice is I am planting these seedlings a little deeper than they were in these pots right here. So these pots, the seedlings aren't as deep as I'd like them. I am planting them a little bit deeper. And with tomatoes and peppers, that's usually okay. You need to be very careful when you do that with cold crops. But planting them a little bit deeper, you can see this one, maybe you can, hopefully you can see how deep this one is right here, compared to how long this seedling is. So generally speaking, when I plant it, hopefully you can see where the seedling starts to get a little thinner and it's bleached out a little bit. That's the depth that I plant it to. So let's try this second one. Gently untangle it from the other plants. Now, if you can see how this one is growing, it definitely needs to be planted a little deeper. It needs to go to this point right here. And there's only one in this little plug. So we're just gonna plant that up. Put the soil around it. And there we go. Now, I may be out a chijimisai. I think I accidentally broke that stem. So that's one thing you need to be really careful of is these little plants when they're long and lanky like this can get stuck on your fingers like that one just did. And I yanked it just a tiny bit and it broke. So we're just gonna leave it and see what happens with it. But I have a gut feeling that we've just lost that plant. We're gonna try a little more carefully with this one. Lift it up gently, make sure my fingers don't get caught on it again, and stick it down in its new pot. So now these are the collard greens. First time I've ever grown this. We're gonna show you one more time how to split them apart. So I'm putting my fingers in between where the two little plants are and very gently, carefully keeping my fingers over them. You're keeping my fingers over the individual plant roots and gently pulling them apart. And we're going to plant this in here. Now I've up-potted my first ever collard greens. So now that we've gone over this pretty carefully, let me get this done really quickly, and then we'll show you what it looks like in the end. Now here's where I'm gonna to have to get brave. I only have one spot left for collard greens, and I've got to choose which one of these to get rid of. Now we've got a big, beautiful one right here that's a little taller and lankier, and a short, squatty one that doesn't have as big of leaves. Now I prefer to keep the ones that are short and stocky because they are actually healthier plants. So this poor little guy, I'm gonna have to get rid of him. It's gonna hurt my heart. Please pray for me. Be very careful how I pull this guy out of there. Stick the stronger little guy in here. And there we go. Bye bye little plant. I'm so sorry. I don't like to kill plants. Might be kind of a hoarding problem. I don't know. So now we're going to work on cauliflowers. We've got purple cauliflower. I only have room for three of those. And green cauliflower. I can only plant around, well, between nine and 12 cauliflowers in my garden. So I'm going to have to just get rid of the extra plants. So for example, this one's leaning over. You can see it's hanging, you can see it's hanging on by its root. So we're just gonna have to remove that one. This one's standing up and is stocky. So we'll get rid of that one. So now we have three purple cauliflowers to transplant. Let's put the tag in so we know which is which. Now we have one pot left here of the overflow pots. Like I said, I've counted out the number of pots that uh, match the amount of plants I can fit into my garden and can actually fit in this grow room right now. So we have one right here. 
and we have only one little ashwagandha that has grown. So we're going to transplant that ashwagandha into this little pot here. Now this guy is really tiny, so we're going to be very gentle and careful with it. And if you're wondering what ashwagandha is, I will link a video up above that talks about ashwagandha and shows you my harvest from last year. So now that we've got all these little plants taken care of, let's clear this out and make room for my next tray. Now for the green cauliflower, we're gonna have to choose the strongest ones and just plant the strongest ones of these. We're going to do the same with the yellow cauliflower. We're gonna choose the best ones. Now really quickly, one reason why I start in the smaller pots is number one, to save room, because you know, as you can see, we're starting a lot more than we actually needed, but we wanted to make sure we got good germination and didn't end up with less plants than we actually needed. So now we have the exact amount of plants that can fit in my garden. And also it controls the water. So these little seedlings, when they're on the top of the soil, if they're in a pot with this much soil, I have to wet all of that soil, all the soil in this big pot, to keep this little tiny seedling and all its roots moist. Now that can spread disease and it can, you know, it can cause germination issues. I mean, it's, it's not impossible. You just have to be really careful starting seeds in larger pots. But I like personally like to start them off in the smaller pots and then pot them up into the larger pots. It's an extra step, but you end up with healthier plants that way and more of a chance of success. It's the first time I'm growing red cabbage. I'm really excited about this. This is red acre cabbage. So this is a tray full of cabbage and cauliflower. Let's get these watered in a little bit because they're looking a little droopy. They're going to look a little droopy for the next two or three days. But they're, going to per but they're going to perk up really quickly and start growing really quickly. Now these pots are too big to grow to water with my sprayer. Now if I had a watering container that had a working dis diffuser on it, that would be better, but I do not at this point. So we're just going to very, very gently, very carefully water these in. Got a lot of spinach that we started, and most of these were started in a paper napkin. I'll see if I can find some footage of that and sprout it in the paper napkin because I really have a hard time getting spinach seeds to sprout. So I only have one spinach in each tray here, so that'll make it easy. There'll be no getting rid of plants with this tray. Now these are ros roselle seedlings grown from seeds that I harvested last year when my roselle bloomed inside my house. Uh, this year it didn't bloom, but we're going to be planting these seedlings and seeing how well they do. They're really looking good. Now for the kohlrabi. Thankfully, they just grew one out of each pot, so I don't have to get rid of any of those. Top soy needs to be thinned out. Now we're almost done. We have one last one. And this is the golden physalis. Now golden physalis is a really amazing plant. I love the flavor. It's a ground cherry. It's a type of ground cherry. Another name is Peruvian ground cherry. And they, I'll, I'll link a video up at the top that I did that compares regular ground cherries with the Peru, Peruvian ground cherries. These are larger. They don't fall off the plant when they're ripe and the plant is much bigger. These are a little bit small, but they're still okay to transplant. We're just going to thin these down a little bit. Make sure we have the best ones. But the Peruvian ground cherry takes a long season to ripen. They need to be large and they need to have a lot of warmth. So these, it is possible that these will be up potted into even larger pots than these four inch pots before I plant them outside. But we'll just see how big they get and how well they do. So here are our plants transplanted under lights. And this grow room is pretty darn full. We've got trays on almost every rack. We're almost completely full here. We can fit two more trays of stuff. But all of this basil up here is going to be gone in about a week and a half. So that's going to leave more room for planting. How exciting. More stuff got the lights off there because of the filming. And all of that down there. 
Now I'm expecting to be able to transplant everything that I moved into bigger pots today outdoors in probably two to three weeks, except for the roselle and the physalis. Those will be continuously potted up into larger pots until the nights are above 50 degrees. Now right now we're having a little bit of a long winter, usually around this time period, you know, this is the second week in March, we, our soil isn't quite as frozen. And sometimes I've been able to actually plant some of my things out mid-March, but it looks like it's probably going to be more towards the end of March this year. So I would love to hear what you are planting. If you've been able to move anything outside, is your soil still frozen? If not, you're really lucky. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has been helpful, please like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful gardening adventure.